that was, yes, he loves everybody in the world, all the children. Yes, he does. But there is a priority. There is a focus. There is an intent that all the other nations want to erase. They want to whitewash it. They want to rub it out. They want to peanut butter spread it. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Praise, Praise, Praise Yah. So um, I'm going to hit on some, some topics. You know, some of these you're going to recognize because we covered them before. And what's impressed on my heart is that there's some fundamental things about our belief that have been hidden from us. And we've discovered them lately. But because they're fundamentals, because they're principles, we need to repeat them. And so they get in our spirit. And so they get in our spirit so strong that we can easily repeat it. That we can easily declare it. That we can easily quote the scripture. That we might tell others. Because once you know a thing, you're responsible to do a thing. But we're also responsible to show others and to tell others. It's not just good enough to come here on Saturday and, and go to the, the Bible study in midweek. And keep it all to yourself. Yahushua said, Why take your light and hide it under a bushel? What good does that do? Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. So the topic here, and this might be a multi-week topic, but the topic is, why is it important to acknowledge our heritage? Why is it important to acknowledge our heritage? And when we think about heritage and you hear discussions about heritage, it's okay for everybody else in the world to know their heritage, to know their history. You ask them, an Irish person, they're going to tell you their history. They're going to tell you their heritage. You ask an Italian person, they're going to tell you. You ask a Japanese person. I don't care. You can ask any other ethnic group in the world about their heritage. They know it, and they're going to tell you. They're going to express it. They're going to celebrate it. But for some reason... When we discover our heritage and we want to dig into it and we want to proclaim it, it's taboo. It's like, no, no, your identity is in Christ. That's not important anymore. It can be important for everybody else, but when it comes to us, it's not important. And I declare today, based on scripture, that our inheritance is important. And if I had no other reason, our heritage is important because it's important to Yah. He's the one who made it important. He's the one who made it important. So our heritage is important to Yah. And we're going to pull this out of scripture because it's always been there. It's always been there. When we were downtrodden and didn't know who we were and felt like we were just lucky enough to get grafted into the, to the body, this was always in the scripture. And if you don't know who you are, you don't know that it's talking about you. You think it's talking about somebody else. And you think, thinking, I'm just lucky just to get in with them. When actually the whole time, it's been fubu. It's been for us, by us. Meaning that it was written by our bloodline. And it was written to our bloodline. All right, so we're going to go through the scripture. Some of this might rub you a little wrong. That's why I want you to read it. That's why I want you to study it. I want you to read and study and pray until it feels comfortable. Until you just got it in your spirit good. Until you got peace about it. So that it's flowing out of you. Because Yah is waking up his people now. He's doing it now. Alright. So the first scripture is Amos chapter 3 verse 2. And it, the the thing that we want to get out of these scriptures is that Yah made a covenant with a bloodline. Right? So the first two covenants he made, he made a covenant with Adam. Right? He made a covenant with Noah. Right? Remember the covenant with Noah? He gave us a rainbow. He said, I make a covenant with every living thing. I will never flood the earth and kill everything again. 
Right? Those two covenants was for everybody. It didn't matter who you were. After Noah, he got more specific with his covenant. And he chose the seed of Abraham. And even further, in the next revision of the covenant, he narrowed it down even more. And he made a covenant with Israel. So that's what these scriptures support right here. And if y'all have questions, you know, like I said, I, I would be down here and walking and talking. Uh, I don't want this to feel like it's a sermon or a message, right? This is, we're getting information today, all right? This is Amos chapter three, verse two. And this is Yah speaking. He says, you alone have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all of your iniquities. And I don't know about y'all. I've been in discussions. I've heard people talk. Why do bad things always seem to happen to our people? Why are we always in this predicament? And we look out in the suburbs and we look at everybody else and say, how do they get that? Why do they get to live that way? But yet we got this right here. This verse answers that question. If anybody asks you that question again, you can take them to this verse. Well, according to Amos chapter 2, I mean 3 verse 2, that y'all only knew our families. And be, because of our iniquities, y'all remember iniquities, right? You know, purposely going against his ways. Because of our iniquities, we have a lot of punishment. This is right out of the scripture. Right out of the scripture. Next one, Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 6 through 7. He said, for you are a holy people unto Yah thy God. Yahuwah thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Who was he talking to? Was he talking to the whole world? He was talking to us. He was talking to us. He said, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Not only was he just talking to you, he said, I'm talking to you despite everybody else, above everybody else. I'm not even looking at everybody else right now. I'm talking to you. You ever have a talk with your kids and they say, well, so-and-so said they can do it. So-and-so's mama said they can do it. What's your answer? I'm talking to you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. That's not your mama over there. I'm your mama. That's not your daddy. I'm talking to you. And this is the way the father is talking to us. He said, out of all the people on the earth, I'm talking to you. Verse 7. Yahuwah did not set his love upon you or choose you because you were more in number than any other people. He said you were the fewest of people. So it wasn't even because there was anything good about us. Well, I'm going to get this one. They're the biggest ones. I mean, no. He said it wasn't even for those reasons that I chose you. Romans chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. It says, this is Paul speaking. What then is the advantage of the Jews? Or what is the value of being circumcised? And he said, everything. Much in every way. Much in every way. So for everything, you know, it's, it's, it's better. You have an advantage because of your heritage. And when we talk about heritage, I'm not taking away anything from what the blood of Yeshua did. Because that's a part of it. I'm not taking away from that. What I'm doing is I'm bringing to light what has been in the dark. And that is that you have a rich heritage that's important and it's written all throughout the Bible. He said much in every way it's better to be in the bloodline that you were in. When your daddy's seed get a cause that egg to impregnate and you were born, it wasn't even your choice, but you were born into this bloodline and it's better that you were born into this bloodline than any other one. Now it may not look like it sometimes, I've seen a lot of footage over the last week of things done to our people. Old and new. It may not seem like it sometimes, but Paul is saying right here, it's better in every way. Then he says why. He says, first, it's better because Yah has given his word to you. He's entrusted his oracles to you. He didn't entrust his oracles to anybody else. Despite how we grew up and you know, we got our Dates Bible and our Schofield Reference Bible and our Darby Bible. And, and we got all of our teachers of the Gentiles that we like and we grew up with. The bottom line is, Paul in the Word said, I have not entrusted my word with anybody but your bloodline. Yes, yes, yes. 
your bloodline. And here we are looking at everybody else, going to everybody else's schools. And he said, I've entrusted this to you, to you. So he made a covenant with your bloodline. You had nothing to do with that. You just were born in. You were born into it. It's important. All right, another reason why it's important is because all of the authors of the Bible, all the writers of the scriptures were of our bloodline. So now we talk about family. We talk about family. Every single, you cannot name an author who wasn't. Some might think, well, Luke, Luke was a Gentile. I've been doing some research. They don't know that. As a matter of fact, they don't even know if Luke wrote Luke. There's no evidence. We don't have any of the original manuscripts. It was a guess. People guess this, this might be Luke. And then also, they're guessing that Luke was a Gentile. They don't know for sure. They're just guessing. All of the authors. Now, you think about it. The father said, I'm only giving my scriptures to you. Why would he give it to Luke if Luke was a Gentile? Did he lie? Somebody lying. I'm, I'm going to side with Yah and say, no, he didn't lie. Amen? Amen. All right, here's another one. The audience of the Bible are of this bloodline. The same bloodline that you were born into, that is the primary audience of all the Bible, all the scriptures, Amen. all of it. Mm -hmm. From Genesis to Revelation, all of it is aimed at you. All of it. It's specific to your bloodline. It's specific to you. So it's important when you read the scriptures that you know that this was written for me. This was written for my kids, my nieces, my nephews, my grandkids, my aunts, my uncles, my siblings, my parents, my grandparents. This was written for all of them. And I'm going to read through these scriptures quickly. We've gone over these before, but I want, to, I want us to see these scriptures. I want us to hear them. I want us to get this in. Acts chapter 3, verse 25 to 26. It says, ye are the children of the prophets. Who's he talking about? You are the children of the prophets. He's talking about you. Because all the prophets are of this bloodline. He said, you're the children of those prophets. And of the covenant which Yah made with our fathers. Verse 26. It says, unto you first. Yah having raised up his son, Yahushua. You mean Yahushua, Jesus, was raised for us first? That's exactly what it said right there. Verse 26. Unto you first. Well, he said he came for the whole world. Well, why would, why would we turn around and read that? Unto you first. Get it in your spirit. Ask the questions. It feels uncomfortable. That's not what I grew up hearing, Brother Larry. Get in your spirit. It says, unto you first, Yah, having raised up his son, Yahushua, sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. In other words, everything that he did, you had first chance at it. All right. Romans 9, 1, 1 um, through 5. It says, I speak the truth in Messiah. I do not lie. My conscience also bear me witness in the set apart spirit or the Holy Spirit that I have great sadness and continued grief in my heart. For I myself could wish that to be banished from Messiah for the sake of my brothers, my relatives, according to the flesh. So Paul's talking about his kinfolk, bloodline. Verse four, it says, who are the children of Israel? To whom is the adoption and the esteem and the covenants and the giving of Torah and the worship and the promises? Whose are the fathers and from whom the Messiah, according to the flesh, who is over all? So Paul is declaring about my kinfolk. You know, he said, I would, I would be banished from Messiah if I could just win all my kinfolk to Messiah. Because my kinfolk are the adoption. They're the ones that Yah esteems. They're the ones that Yah made the covenants with. They're the ones who were given the scriptures. They're the ones who were given worship. And they're the ones who were given the promises. Why is your inheritance important? 
those are just a few things right there. You are the adoption. You are the esteem. You are the covenants. You have the scriptures, the worship, and the promises. They were all given to you first. All right? So out of all the covenants that Yah made, everyone that came after Noah was directed to your bloodline. Everyone. Everyone. All the promises and all the covenants. And you might think, well, what about the new covenant, Brother Larry? What about the new? Are we under the new covenant? That word new means renewed. It means renewed. What about that renewed covenant? We can see in Hebrews chapter 8. It says, finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith Yah, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Who did he make the new covenant with? Let me read it again. It said, Behold, the days come, saith Yah, will I make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Did he include any other nation? No. This is right here in your Bible. Brother Larry is not taking this out of context. I didn't grab this out of the Quran. I didn't grab this out of the Book of Mormon. I didn't grab this out of no. You look at your King James Bible and you're going to read the exact same thing. How come we don't think of it that way? When we think of the new covenant, we think about the whole world. And I'm going to clarify this a little bit at the end. Because I know by now y'all probably thinking this, or Larry, he's, a, he's, he's trying to, you know, he's trying to, you know, take things away from other people. No, that's not the case at all. We'll clarify that at the end. But he said, this is for the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Verse 9, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, I regarded them not. That's why we're here. That's why our people have 400 years of bad history. That's why we came over here in slave ships and got scattered all over the world. Because we regarded, our forefathers regarded not the covenant. They, they walked away from it. They didn't guard it. Verse 11. It says, and they shall not teach every man their neighbor and every man his brother saying, no, no, yeah, for all shall know me. So when we have this new covenant, he said, we won't even have to teach everybody, our neighbors, and, you know, about his ways. He said, they all will know me. All right, I'll skip down to verse 13. In that he saith, a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxes old is ready to vanish away. So, even in what we call the new covenant, it still was made with your bloodline. Is your heritage important? Yes. Yes. He didn't make this covenant with no other nation, with your bloodline. All right, we're moving on. Yahushua said that he was, he was sent specifically to your bloodline. And I know we like it well. You know, God so loved the whole. He said, He sent Jesus to the whole world. He sent him to the whole world. Well, we'll see what Jesus said about that. What did he say about that? Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. This is uh, Yahushua talking. He said, But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. who, who did he say he was sent to? He was sent to the lost sheep the house of Israel. He didn't include any other nation. In fact, when he sent them out two by two, he said, don't even go talk to nobody else. You just talk to Israel. That's why I'm here. Um, John, I'm sorry, Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 17. The prophets, Yahushua and Paul, they declare the same thing. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, we see the same thing is proclaimed about your bloodline. Isaiah 45, 17. But Israel shall be saved in Yah with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. So if you ever want to know what, how to define world when it says, for God so loved the world, it tells you right here in the prophecy. It says that Israel is the world without end. Yeah, some of y'all got it. Some of y'all are going to get it next week. 
So when you ask that question about John 3.16, who is he talking about? This prophet already gave an answer for it. John chapter 4, verse 22. He says, you worship not, this is Yahushua speaking, you worship not what you know. We know what worship is. Mm -hmm. For salvation is of the, what? Jews. <gasps> That's your bloodline. He's talking about you. Who is salvation of? This is Jesus talking. Did he say every nation in the world? Did he say everybody? He said salvation is of the Jews. Romans 11, 26. And so all Israel shall be what? All Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Jacob is Israel. Jacob is Israel. So salvation is all about Israel. It doesn't mean that others can't come in. But the primary audience and the focus of Yeshua and all the prophets, the reason why he came was for Israel. That Israel might be saved. Um, let's look at Paul's words, right? Let's look at what Paul said about our bloodline. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. We know this verse. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Messiah, for it is the power of Yah unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To who? To the Jew first and also to the Greek. You mean there's a preference? You mean there's a priority? You mean that there's a hierarchy? Everybody is not treated exactly the same? Let's read it again. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and then to everybody else. Amen. Then to everybody. Is that how you think about it? Is that how you think about it? Let's look at another verse. Romans uh, 2, 10. This is Paul again. He says, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. So we see the Gentiles aren't excluded. We just got the narrative wrong. We got the narrative wrong because the narrative we received was embodied in that song, Jesus loves little children. All the children. And it's true, he does. Red, yellow, black, and white. Right? But when we sing that song, we lose his priority. His priority was you. His priority was your bloodline, your mama, your daddy, your grandmama, your granddaddy, your kids, your grandkids, your aunts, your uncles, nieces, and nephews. That was his priority. All of those who are in the bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That was, yes, he loves everybody in the world. All the children. Yes, he does. But there is a priority. There is a focus. And there was an intent that all the other nations want to erase. They want to whitewash it. They want to rub it out. They want to beat up or spread it. And so it, it, it makes you feel like, well, I'm just happy I could be. You know, I'm just happy I can get in there. It's a lie. He had a preference. Amen. He had a he had a hierarchy. He had a priority. He has an order of doing things and it's written all throughout the scripture. And then somebody want to turn around and tell me, well, brother, it don't matter about your heritage. We all the same in Christ. No, that's not what the Bible says. Amen. You're not going to find that anywhere throughout the scriptures. Bring it to me, show it to me in black and white, then we got something to talk about. But until then, I'm going to believe what the scriptures say about me. I'm going to believe what the scriptures say about my family, about my kids, about the ones who I love, about the ones who I consider Israel. Amen? Amen. Amen. So it's important. And I just want to clarify, am I excluding the Gentiles? Brother Larry, you sound kind of... You know, you sound kind of prejudiced. See, you know, as a people, we're sensitive about being prejudiced because we've been excluded so much. 
We've been pushed down so much. We've been done so wrong just because of the color of our skin. For, for years and hundreds of years, when we look down our bloodline, and I have to acknowledge the rape that happened in my family to give me the skin color I got. All those things were happening to us, and so we don't want to do that to anybody else. But the bottom line is not in us to do that to anybody else. We are not that kind of people. So when we bring this out of the Bible, it's not to exclude anybody. It's not to belittle anybody. It's to rightly align the word of truth in our minds and in our hearts the way Yah gave it to us. That's why we have scriptures. That's why we have the Bible. It's so that we can learn what he says, believe what he said, get it in our hearts, get clarity on it, and then act it and do it. Be it. Be that light. Amen? Amen. So no, we're not excluding Gentiles. If we exclude Gentiles, then we're changing scriptures. We're changing the Bible. So no, Yah forbid. Yah forbid. If we read the scriptures, we'll see that all throughout the Bible, Yah had a plan for the Gentiles. There was always a provision for those who worked in, in the bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's always been a provision for them. And in fact, before he even made a covenant with Abraham, when Noah got out of the boat, he gave his sons a set of laws, a set of laws and statutes and commandments to do. Some of those included sacrifices for sins. They had a covenant with Yah. His sons, Ham, Japheth, Shem, all three of them. And when they departed and they grew and they made nations all throughout the world, they had those laws and those covenants. So they could serve Yah just like anybody else. Everybody in the world. And then when Moses received the law on the Mount Sinai, they call it the Sinaitic Covenant. When he received that covenant, there was even the provisions in that covenant for what they call strangers. Yeah. Strangers were those who were Israelites. Those who were sojourning, maybe who were passing through, or maybe those who the Israelites employed or had as slaves. They had provisions also in the covenant. The Gentiles were always included. So when we say to the Jew first and then to the Greek, we're not belittling anyone. This is the order that Yah chose to move in. When he made his plan for the whole world, this is the order that he set in place. And he always made provision for them because he's a loving God. Amen. He's a loving God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then we looked at the renewed covenant already. So with this renewed covenant, yeah, he said, I make it with the house of Israel and the house of Jacob, which are Israelites. But he also, he let us know that he included the other nations. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. He said, there's neither Jew nor Greek, neither bond nor free, neither male nor female, for ye all are one in Christ. We're one in Christ. Well, what is, what is Messiah? What does Messiah represent? He is our atonement. He came to make atonement for sin. That was his primary function. He made atonement for sin. Whoever believes in him has that same atonement. They have that same forgiveness. It don't matter if you're Jew or Gentile, male or female, bond or free. When you receive his forgiveness, we all receive it the same. Amen? Amen. 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 So no. No, we're not excluding. And it's a trick. It's a trick. As soon as you do anything to, to lift up and recognize your heritage, others, even amongst us, others are going to come against you. It's a trick. It's a trick. Satan wants to keep us blind to this. Because the minute that we get a hold of this, it's going to change your life. It's going to shatter the chains of bondage on your mind. And your life will never be the same. He doesn't want that to happen. He wants to keep you in tradition. He wants you to keep you feeling good. Oh, I'm just going to go to church and feel good and go home. That's what Satan wants. Mm -hmm. He don't care if you come here and praise God and go home. That don't affect his kingdom. 
That don't do nothing to him. But you come here and you take the word and the shackles fall off and your life starts changing and you start opening up your mouth and others around you start getting, then that's when he's going to say, okay, okay, we're going we're gonna to have to squash that. All this heritage stuff. We're going to squash that. I can't afford to have all these Israelites waking up, figuring out who they are. Who they are. I can't get them to steal cars and shoot each other if they find out who they are. I can't get them to fornicate and keep having babies and fathers keep walking away from families if they know who they are. But as long as we just come to church and praise God and and, and and do all the things we like, all the traditional things, and go home and don't change. He don't care. Why would he care about that? He ain't coming after you. You are no threat to him in your sleepy condition. None whatsoever. But let you wake up and you get these scriptures in you and you start opening up your mouth and you start telling your nieces and your nephews and your grandchildren and your children. And when they start seeing a change in you, then wow. Wow, but you know, Mama, she really taking these laws and commandments seriously. When they see the change in you, that's when he's going to raise his ugly head and come against you. He's going to do everything he can to prevent you from aligning yourself to Yah's instructions. Because the minute you start doing that is the minute that all the curses for not doing that fall off. Because whether you like it or not, when you were born, your DNA said, Okay, I have a covenant. Your DNA said, I have to align to the terms of this covenant. Your DNA said, if I do these things and I follow Yah's blessings, I mean instructions, I will be blessed. And then your DNA also had to agree with, if I don't follow his instructions, I will be cursed. And we don't like to use that word cursed. We feel like, well, just because Yeshua came and I said, come into my heart. That, that, that we don't have a curse anymore. I challenge you to look at your life, look at the life of your family and those around you, and then ask yourself that question. Is there a curse? Is there a curse? So Satan don't want you to wake up. He don't want you, he don't want you to get this understanding. He knows it's going to change your life. He knows it's going to make you powerful. He knows it's going to release you and give you freedom. And he knows that it's going to impact everybody around you. So is your heritage important? Yes. It's very important. It is of the utmost importance. It's so important that he wrote the whole Bible about it. He gave us a whole Bible. It's that important. So we're just finishing up. All right. During the last 2,000 years, we lost this heritage. We lost it. The Bible said that we would forget. He said that we would forget our name. We would forget his name. That our name would be forgotten. And that happened over the last 2,000 years. Slowly, it just got bombarded throughout time. And then once they started that transatlantic slave trade, it was lights out. They, they took us as kids. Most of, most of the, the, the ones they took were young. They didn't have their elders to tell them who they were. They changed their names so they didn't know what their names were or what they meant. They don't know their customs or none of that. And they were taken to a whole different land. They were mixed up as a people, people of other tribes that they didn't know who had different dialects. By the time that slave trade got, it got active and enforced, we totally forgot who we were as a people. We, we were totally disconnected from our heritage. Mm -hmm. But now Yah is doing the thing. These are the latter days. In the latter days, and we're going to go over this next week, he made promises to this bloodline. He made promises specifically to this bloodline. So I'm going to read this last scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. It says, And Yah shall scatter thee among all people. Are we scattered among all people today? We the only people in the world who are scattered all over the world. Not of our own doing. We didn't decide I'm going to move my family to Brazil. I'm going to move my family to the U.S. I'm going to move my family to Japan. I'm going to move. No. We're the only people that scattered all over the world against our will. And this is what Yah said. He said, and Yah shall scatter thee among all people. It happened. He didn't lie. 
He said, from the one end of the earth to the other. And that's where we at today. We all over the place. All over the place. He said, and there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And that's exactly what happened to us. Gods that our fathers didn't know, wood and stone. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we are a people who have a rich heritage. And it's so important that Yah spoke to prophets and he told prophets to write about it. And he told us to gather all these written things and, and, and to call them scriptures and bind them up and put it in the book. And he said, curses anybody who takes away from this book or who adds to this book. And he said, here, this is for you. This is for your bloodline. So it's, it's important. It's very important. Amen. Hallelujah.